If you are unwilling to learn and or accept the facts, click off this video now. This educational dialogue is composed of factual information, and with that, our sources. Our sources consist of virology studies, immunobiology studies, epidemiology studies, and common sense. We will also link the false, unproven studies that some of these conspiracy theories feed off of. Everything presented here today has been fact-checked by a team we've put together to rat out the false facts and disinformation. We don't just read the articles, we read the source, and with that comes certainty and truth. The main conspiracy going around is that N95, cloth, and homemade masks are ineffective against COVID-19 and that they provide little to absolutely no protection against the virus. These claims are unforgivably false. In order to understand how masks work, you have to understand what we expel when we breathe, cough, or sneeze. We expel droplets and aerosols that either fall to the ground or evaporate before it gets the chance to do so, and when they evaporate, they become bioaerosol residues. These residues can linger in the air for an extended period of time in all environments, and this is what poses a threat to anyone around them. When we cough or sneeze, the droplets are usually around 100 microns across. The large ones fall to the ground while the smaller ones evaporate. What's left after they evaporate are the residues. They vary in size from 0.5 to 20 microns across. This remains true for COVID-19. N95 masks are rated to filter out 95% of particles 0.3 microns or larger when fitted properly. This is a substantial fact that many refuse to believe because they simply do not understand how these aerosols are transmitted. N95 masks do indeed work and function. That's why they are used in the medical field and are in great shortage during these difficult times. What about cloth and homemade masks? Although they cannot compare it to N95 masks and respirators, they do make a difference. Cloth surgical masks are rated to filter out aerosols approximately 6 to 10 microns across or larger, but don't provide the same amount of coverage as N95s. A critical lab study conducted by several dozen epidemiologists a couple months ago concluded that homemade masks vary in protection, but the efficacy of them range from 30 to 95 percent. In other words, they can block 30 to 95 percent of all aerosols based on the design and cloth used. Masks made from pillowcases, for example, were one-third as effective as cloth surgical masks. A third is still a significant reduction in the number of aerosols expelled, and it's enough to save a life. A simulation of the effects of COVID-19 in New York suggests that if 50% of individuals adopted masks, 17 to 45% of projected deaths could be prevented. If 80% of individuals adopted masks, 24 to 65% of projected deaths could be prevented, and so on. And this? The disclaimer shown here is for expressing that the mask will not 100% protect you from COVID-19, but it will reduce the transmission of the disease. Every little bit helps. It's a matter of if you and those around you are willing to do this social service. There have been claims that masks somehow affect the process of breathing, either by stopping oxygen from being inhaled or stopping carbon dioxide from being exhaled. This is borderline nonsense, as surgical masks are made from breathable material, allowing air to flow through both directions. A study by the National University of Singapore concludes that there is less than a one thousandth of a percent difference in blood oxygen levels between wearing a mask and not wearing one at all. Similar studies provide the same results, while at rest and with moderate exercise. Masks do not affect your oxygen intake. These results apply to all masks. Furthermore, surgeons work with surgical masks on for many hours at a time. They have a looser fitting, making it highly unlikely that anyone would see a depletion in their oxygen levels. As for CO2 poisoning, again, nonsense. Within the same study mentioned before, 
the CO2 levels within the participants at rest and at moderate exercise were nearly identical. The CO2 parts per million value with the mask on was only 370, while mild CO2 poisoning begins at around 10,000 parts per million. There is absolutely no comparison. CO2 molecules are much smaller than the droplets and aerosols that COVID and other viruses travel on. This fact allows masks to filter out the moisture, but not the CO2 or oxygen. Another conspiracy we hear is that the warm weather will without a doubt get rid of COVID-19. This is purely an excuse to not wear a mask. That's all it is. There are absolutely no facts behind this, no studies, no research, absolutely nothing. It's also one of the main points in this King's Island petition to get rid of the mask requirement. Some of the warmest regions on the planet have ironically been hit the hardest with COVID-19. There is no slowdown. There is no proof showing that the warm weather will do anything to affect this virus. A study conducted by researchers on the effects of air temperature and relative humidity on coronavirus survival suggests that at 20 degrees C, they can survive for up to 14 days, and at 40 C, for up to 6 days. Despite the temperature difference, they still survived for days. Not minutes, or seconds, days. All viruses are different, and COVID-19 is still new to us, but it seems pretty clear that hot weather definitely does not make a noticeable difference in the spread of the disease. The ultimate conclusion is that masks do work. Even if it's a little, it all counts. It all could save a life you never knew existed. And to the people who say it's against our rights to mandate masks in very public settings, please silence yourself and your selfish stupidity. There is no room for people like that on this crowded planet, and we all need to help each other. We all need to realize that a life, a human life, may be on the line. You could take away someone's father or someone's daughter, all because you didn't wear a mask. It's not about protecting you, it's about protecting those around you. Others exclaim that they shouldn't mandate masks on healthy people. How exactly do you know that you're healthy? as COVID-19 has a very delayed timer on one symptoms show. It could take up to a couple weeks. And during those couple weeks, you could be unknowingly spreading it to others. Please be willing to learn to end this pandemic. Your neighbor depends on it. The cashier at your local store depends on it. Our veterans depend on it. Everyone depends on your decision to protect yourself and more importantly, others.